This morning, two more women have come forward accusing media mogul Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault. Her greatest regret is opening that door, but she had no idea what was coming. An unnamed Italian actress now speaking out through her attorney, saying that in February 2013, four years ago, Weinstein bullied his way into her hotel room where he sexually assaulted her. This coming after Weinstein's statement denying any allegations of non-consensual sex. I told the head of your studio that HW raped me. In a series of tweets Thursday, McGowan said when she was working with Amazon Studios, they ignored her claims against Harvey Weinstein. Over and over, I said it. He said it hadn't been proven. I said I was the proof. Weinstein's spokesperson said, any allegations of non-consensual sex are unequivocally denied by Mr. Weinstein. The women who stood up have to be applauded yeah, yeah. because that's really, really sure. hard to do when nobody wants to stand up and the silence is deafening. And I think that's, that's the part that we're responsible for. More than 30 women have now made accusations against Harvey Weinstein, varying from sexual harassment, assault, and rape. Can we get a smile this Kate way? Beckinsale was just 17 when she met with Weinstein in his hotel room. He opened the door in his bathrobe. I was incredibly naive and young, and it did not cross my mind that this older, unattractive man would expect me to have any sexual interest in him. She says before she decided to speak out, it was frightening. Not clear whether anyone would believe the women or anyone would care. She got the attention of one of the reigning titans of the business, producer Harvey Weinstein. Of the more than 60 women who have now come forward to say they were his prey, nearly 20 say it happened before. A girl named Ashley Judd says she entered his hotel room. He had called, wanted to talk to you. Had you heard about him? Had you heard anything about him? I mean, heard to be wary. No, I had not. No, I had no warning. I had no warning. I remember the lurch when I went to the desk and I said, uh, Mr. Weinstein, is he on the patio? And they said, he's in his room. And I was like, oh, are you kidding me? But you went up because? I had a business appointment, which is as that's, you know, his pattern of sexual predation. That was how he rolled. She already knew something about sexual predation. She's written about being sexually assaulted when she was young and the terror you feel before you're trapped. And in a pattern so many women say happened to them too, she says the man inside began insistent pressure. As he was sitting beside me, I had my hair in a ponytail and he kind of ran his hand over my hair. You're like 40 and I'm 18 and I don't think that we should be doing this because you're like so much older than me and I don't think this is right. I just started to feel sick. Yeah, so I said, I said, I don't think we should do this. He wrote on the computer, do you want to kiss me? I said no and tried to laugh it off. I kind of tried to just brush it off. He asked me again and I said no again. He, he kept asking those questions. He asked me again if I was sure. Yeah, he just kept asking and the answer was still no. I, I tried to brush it off by saying, oh, I think they should they should just like keep their distance and wait, kind of, like wait and see. Um, but he didn't. But he didn't respect my answer. He then tried to kiss me. He kissed me anyway. And I, I kind of stepped back and I was like, I don't think we should do this. Like, I don't think I want to do this. He didn't listen to my excuses. He then um, tried to kiss me again. And he continued to ask me for more. And he then started asking me continuously why I didn't want to kiss him and why I wasn't attracted to him and why, 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 why. She says the man inside began insistent pressure. There's this constant grooming negotiation going on. I thought no meant no. So she I says he first no, asked no. to give her a massage because she must that be tired. He wanted to talk, talk in his bedroom and then said my legs were really tight and started giving me a massage. There are photos from that time, the, the Vanity Fair Oscar party, I wanted to be this one released to us by Harvey Weinstein. He's put up this picture. Ugh. Journey said this shows that you were friends, that you were fine, that he even tried to fix you up with his brother. 
or did fix you up with his brother. She says they had tea in public. So you were friends? No, that's deny, attack, reverse the order of offender and victim. And she points to a different picture from that same event. And I hoped I wouldn't pass him, but I did and he obviously grabbed my hand. It's like the look on my face is abject terror. Like I can see it in my eyes. Your elbow, yeah. it seems like, to be pushing him yeah. back while you're holding his hand. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, uh, it's very gross. It's very gross. She says it's the way she felt when she didn't feel powerful enough to speak out publicly, even as actresses were talking privately about the same experience with Harvey. And in the last three weeks, Weinstein has given that statement to the New York Times and others saying he didn't retaliate against anyone. And again, any sex was consensual. He might very well believe that. The Weinstein scandal continues to deepen every day now. Oscar winners Angelina Jolie and Gwyneth Paltrow say they were both sexually harassed by the movie mogul. And that's not all. Weinstein faces newly revealed allegations of rape as the list of stars speaking out grows larger by the day. Paltrow tells the New York Times Weinstein harassed her when she was 22. She had just signed up for a star making part in the movie Emma and was meeting with him in his hotel room. She says Weinstein placed his hands on her and suggested they go to his bedroom for massages. Quote, I was a kid. I was signed up. I was petrified. According to the Times, she refused his advances and told her boyfriend at the time, Brad Pitt. ET has learned that Pitt confronted Weinstein and told him repeatedly that it better never happen again. And Brad's ex, Angelina Jolie, also tells the paper Weinstein made unwanted advances to her in the late 90s in a hotel room, which she rejected. Quote, I had a bad experience with Harvey Weinstein in my youth, and as a result, chose never to work with him again and warn others when they did. And more bombshells today. The New Yorker published a detailed report adding new claims that Weinstein raped three women, including the actress Asia Argento. Today, she tweeted a scene from a movie she wrote and directed, which she says is similar to what she experienced with the Hollywood mogul. You know what would be great is if you give me a massage. In a statement this morning, Weinstein's rep said, quote, any allegations of non-consensual sex are unequivocally denied by Mr. Weinstein. And his lawyer called previous New York Times reporting, quote, saturated with false and defamatory statements. And Oscar winner Mira Sorvino told The New Yorker Weinstein sexually harassed her in 1995 while she was promoting the movie Mighty Aphrodite. She spoke to KTLA this morning. It's a travesty that this sort of behavior is normalized and accepted for decades. The idea that this predator, this assaulter, was out there silencing women, it's beyond infuriating. There has to be a comeuppance for all of this, all of the people who are part of that chain. And it's not just his behavior that was troubling, it's the way that people around him excused it. And perhaps nothing is more emblematic of that than this story told by actress Angie Everhart. She oh, says while she was sleeping on a boat at the Cannes Film Festival, Weinstein broke into her room and masturbated in front of her. I told people on the boat, I told people at the dinner I was at, and everybody was like, oh, that's just Harvey. What the fuck? <laughs> So everyone knew, and they just went with it. Incredibly, some initially tried to defend him, from Oliver Stone, whose first response was, it's not easy what he's going through, to longtime friend Donna Karen, who took an incredible tack. How do we display ourselves? How do we present ourselves as women? What are we asking? Are we asking for it? It's not Harvey Weinstein. You look at everything all over the world today, you know, and how women are dressing and, you know, what they're asking by just presenting themselves the way they do. Excuse me? You say you witnessed an, a, a great many sexual encounters in the back of the car um, while you were there. And you've, you're going to say in this book that you're writing that many of them were non-consensual, um, that the women concerned said, you're hurting me, get off me, and all of that. Um, is that what you're alleging? Yeah. With Harvey, there was no such word as no, and I think that's really the crux of the, of the matter. Zelda, when you first started mm. working for him, some voices were warning you what he was like. 
I had one warning, um, and I have to say that woman really saved my my um, my honour because actually being warned is very important because it armed you. And all she had said to me was, always sit in, a, in an armchair, <laughs> don't ever sit on a sofa next to him, and always keep your puffer jacket on. <laughs> um, and there was no more than that. But actually it was an incredibly important and good piece of advice because it meant that I was ready actually when he did start behaving badly. And it also meant that I wasn't as frightened because I knew that it had happened to other people. And it came to a head for you when he sexually assaulted, attempted rape on your colleague? Yes. Um, we were at the Venice Film Festival and he, he tried to rape her. And what did you do? She was extremely distressed. Um, she was shaking, very distressed, clearly in shock. Um, didn't want anybody to know, was absolutely terrified of the consequences, what would happen. So you accused him of attempted rape? Yeah. Actually. yeah. And he denied it? Yes. And then he what? said nothing at all had happened. And he swore on the life of his wife and his children, which was his, his best get out of jail card that he used quite a lot. And did it ever cross your mind that he might be telling the truth? No. Not if you saw the girl that I had just seen. Now, Megan, of course, an attorney, and I mean, I think people hear these allegations, Megan, and they think, how is this person having dinner in Scottsdale? Mm -hmm. Is there any mm -hmm. potential of a criminal case here? There's some potential, but the likelihood is very small. Um, as a practical matter, it's very difficult to bring these cases, never mind secure a conviction. The lawyers made it very clear that we didn't have very many options. Um, we hadn't, because we hadn't gone to the police when we were in Venice, we had no physical evidence, and ultimately it would be two under 25 year olds women, words, against Harvey Weinstein. So you were ready to bring him down at that point. You took the only option you thought you could, and you faced doors slamming in your face, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it sounds odd, but for me, you know, this was really where the, my trauma started and my abuse started. I could deal with Harvey. He was an unpleasant, difficult man, but I had ways of dealing with him. Um, what I couldn't deal with, what I had no equipment for, was to deal with the legal system. And after this process, I actually was pretty broken. I was pretty broken and exhausted and so disillusioned. And I didn't have the energy to go on fighting. He's a power addict. Um, everything he did, everything that drove him was about dominance with men and women. Um, he put an enormous amount of energy into humiliating men and an enormous amount of energy into getting women to submit and getting men to submit. That was what drove him, you know, his, his overarching need for, for power. And it doesn't have anything to do with sex. It's all about power and abuse. So you think now, if you had been listened to at that point, everything that came after 20 years ago would have been avoided? Yeah. It was the entire system, you know, and, and the system essentially protected Harvey in this case, but I can guarantee you it protects a hundred other people like that. I don't feel comfortable. I mean, don't have a fight with me. It's not nice. Please, I'm not going to do anything. I swear my children, please come in on everything. I'm a famous I'm, guy. I'm feeling please, very uncomfortable right now. Please come in now and one minute and if you want to leave when the guy comes with my jacket. Why yesterday you, you touch my breast? Oh, please, I'm sorry. Just come on. I'm used to that. This New Yorker story was the very first to report sexual assault and, and rape at a point in time at which Harvey Weinstein was already saying, you know, this is just harassment. This isn't so bad. I'm going to get treatment. This is going to pass. It was always apparent to me how important this was. Every woman who spoke out in our coverage did an incredibly brave thing. 
It was painful personally. It put them at professional risk. They put a lot on the line. The women who came out against Bill Cosby also face a really aggressive level of public humiliation. And you've never fortunately had any experiences like that. I mean, do you just consider yourself one of the lucky ones? Well, you were probably in your late 20s, right? Uh, this and, is actually, uh, um, I was 29. Yeah, see, and I, I was I, never, I've never, was never alone with him ever, right. anywhere. But I, but the, but the, I do the, think the, it's important to talk about how young. How young these, were. these people were and how yeah. vulnerable they were. Yeah. Gwyneth was like 22 mm -hmm. when this happened. This was before she was, you know, right. Gwyneth and, and uh, uh, the, you know, that's yeah. a big part of it. And these, these, these guys who do this, I mean, this is like serious sexual predation. Yeah. And it's about, it's, about, it's about targeting somebody who's vulnerable. In her first TV interview, model and actor Zoe Brock has told us she was a victim of sexual harassment by Harvey Weinstein and claimed that in 1997, she was brought back to a hotel under false pretenses. I saw an opportunity. I made my intention clear. So he made his intentions clear. How? By pretending that he needed help with his ebook cover and channel art? What about the message he sent to Josie? Does this look like someone who is making his intentions clear to you? It was only about, like, he only wanted to talk to me about my camera and I shouldn't worry. And I was like, oh, okay. So, like, he doesn't have any bad intentions. And Harvey walked out of the room and came back in naked. He came back naked? Naked. When I finished putting the ebook cover together, um, I turned around to tell him that I'd finished it, and he had obviously been arousing himself behind me um, because when I turned around, he was stood right behind me um, with an erection. When I didn't want to give him a massage, he offered to give me one. And then said my legs were really tight and started giving me a massage. But I didn't like that. The minute he touched me, I was really revulsed and scared. And I jumped up and I ran to the bathroom and, and locked the door. And he chased me and was pounding on the door and begging me to come out. So eventually he sort of calmed down and promised to step away and put clothes on and leave me alone. And I could tell from the distance of his voice when he next spoke that he had left the door, so there was distance between he and I. Mm -hmm. Zoe, what did, you sh what did you shout through the door when he was pounding on the door? Um, I shouted, put your clothes on, you naughty boy. <laughs> Which is ludicrous and f almost comical when you think about a 23-year-old yelling that at a... How old was he then? 45? I think he's 22 years older than me, I mm. figured out. Um, when I came out, he was robed and sitting on the bed and he was crying. He was crying? He was crying. What did he say? <laughs> he said, you don't like me because I'm fat. I've never forgotten it. It was mm. the strangest thing. Mm. And I've then what did you do? Well, it was this weird thing. I mean, I'm a super sensitive person and I'm really compassionate to people who are suffering, you know? So for a moment there, I felt like really bad for him, which, you know, kind of makes me want to smack myself <laughs> on the head. I didn't want to like hurt him. I processed it at the time. I was like, oh, is this a real insight into who he is? Did something happened to him when he was a kid? Was he rejected so many times by women? And then she friend zoned me the next day <laughs> and I was shut down. And then I didn't have any more interest with you until I was 21 and I had my first girlfriend, Jenny. And I was a virgin up until 21. So basically he's been rejected his entire life. Is that why he's targeting girls in this age group now? Is that why he's forcing himself on girls who reject him? Like, I really didn't know. And that's kind of how I, I started rationalizing it to myself and feeling quite sorry for him. But people have pointed out since whenever I've told this story, because I have really told this story a lot, that he was probably just mm. me. Mm. And there's, it's highly likely that it was just another ruse to seduce me, to make you, me feel sorry for him. You will have heard, Zoe, that uh, he, his lawyers have released a statement which suggests that all these incidents were consensual. <laughs> it was adult consensual sex. There was no pressure. It was adult consensual sex. There was no pressure. There was none of that at all. When this was 100%, consensual adult sex. I hope he's watching. Say that to my face, <laughs> Harvey. 
I would happily stand in a courtroom and testify. Happily. Um, Were you, you know, threatened really, by Weinstein himself? Uh, I was threatened with a lawsuit from his lawyers, um, mm -hmm. and intermediaries did a lot of threatening and sort of menacing statements. All Harley has to do is give the go-ahead and I will hire a team of private investigators and attorneys to expose all of you. We do have your real address. If Harley decided to sue, he has the money. He'll let me know. Do not blow this off as a joke. I am real. My money is real. But fundamentally, it was very apparent early in the reporting on this that this was a public safety issue, you know? You can't stop going if you have evidence that there's maybe an ongoing pattern of behavior that's, that's endangering people. No, it, the... <laughs> well, cheer, cheer for the women who talked. There's a whole range of reasons why sexual assault survivors don't come forward in every walk of life, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, whether it's you know, a woman in a blue collar job or a woman in Hollywood, mm -hmm. there are the same uh, profoundly personal reasons why it is sometimes almost impossible to come forward. You know, they fear career repercussions, they fear uh, what their families will think. You know, these commentators saying that she was asking for it, that, you know, that this was her fault, um, just shaming. Weinstein is chasing this social climbing pussy, you know, is chasing these girls. So they're just, they're actresses, they want drama, they want money, they want attention, they want accolades. That's the mentality, and he's chasing these girls. These are social climber girls. They're social climbers. You've got the status, fucking use it, bro. It is not the way it will be in the future. Because Harvey, you and others like you are done.